behold, the BMW R18 Transcontinental, home of BMW's largest ever boxer twin. First introduced to Canadians last summer in a more elemental classic version, for this fresh new effort at building a solid heavyweight cruiser platform, BMW created a massive 1800cc boxer engine that we guarantee you will never forget. We're talking about a 225 pound aluminum and chrome sculpture sporting air and oil cooled heads the size of footballs. This runner comes with a handlebar mounted bat wing style fairing, a big screen infotainment system sporting Marshall speakers, hard saddlebags and a comfy passenger seat. The Transcontinental also adds a top trunk and a wraparound passenger backrest and a larger fuel tank for the long haul days. Sweet looking, but how does it ride? Well, let's ask this week's guest road tester, a Honda Valkyrie owner, Dave Fox. So David, I wanted to put you on this motorcycle because you have been riding a Valkyrie for years. And what year is your Valkyrie? 2001. 2001, and, and there's definitely some DNA there in terms of the kind of motorcycle. Mm -hmm. um, so what did you think when you first rolled up and had a look? Well, it's a beautiful machine. Uh, I would even say, hate to say this, but it's even better looking than my Valkyrie because it has extra uh, parts to it. Like yeah. I love the the dash, the the, sc the windscreen. Just the, the fit and finish on this bike is is really first class. It was a little heavy. I know it weighs more than my Valkyrie does. Yeah. So it takes some getting used to. But you know, like it's it is a more comfortable ride than my Valkyrie. The the suspension system and the the seat cushion. Yeah. There's definitely more give there, and it, you know our area as well as I do. We have many many potholes, and I had a few and the ride is, is, is great. Yeah, it's a plush, cushy way to go down the highway, that's for sure. And you've got this big 1800cc twin. Uh, what did you think? We fired up the engine, it comes with three riding modes. Uh, you know, you have the rain, the rock, the roll, but just overall, the big twin, what did you think? Well, it, I'll use the term loosely, but it does rock and roll because it's got lots of, and it's smooth riding once it, once it levels out, but it starts to rumble when it's sitting still. But yep. as soon as you get, go through the gears, and really you can't even get into sixth gear until you're probably doing 85 kilometers an hour or so. So I was in fifth gear more often. Yeah. And it smooths out really well. So yep. there was very little, very little vibration in the handlebars, if any. Nice brakes. Uh, yeah, what did you think of the suspension and the brakes? Yeah, the suspension is, is top notch. Uh, the brakes seem to be effective. Um, I didn't have to slow down too quickly at any given time, but I certainly felt like they were firm and could stop this monster from, stop, from, from going where you don't want it to go. Yeah. What did you think of the instrument pod and just the overall rider experience up front? It's really classy looking. Uh, it's it's like a small TV screen, and the lighting on it is good enough that in a, on a sunny day like today, I could read the screen without my reading glasses. Some things that it has for controls, I think I'd still do those controls when I'm parked. Right. Because first of all, you've got to learn what the menu does. And one of the menu items is to get to the radio. Yeah. So it requires some studying, experimenting, yeah. and I, you know, sometimes some of the items in the in the uh, Man, the menu were buried a little bit, so you have to keep clicking to get to what you want. And I don't think you'd want to be doing that mm -hmm. on the highway riding until you get really used to it. Yeah. Uh, sound system, very important. Luggage, mm -hmm. uh, what did you think? Yeah, first of all, the sound system was excellent. I like all kinds of music, but country is maybe my favorite, and it sounds really good. You've got it coming at you from two different directions. Yeah. And uh, excellent quality sound, no vibration. Pretty crisp, actually. Yeah. So overall, was there anything you didn't like? The only, the only comment I make, and it's not for me so much, because I don't do it, but some riders like to get their legs stretched out. Right. And I have highway pegs on my Valkyrie, which I use sometimes, mm -hmm. but with the motor the way it is, being the BMW motor, there's no place really to put your feet. The good thing is, with the, the, the foot pad the way it is, you've got room to shuffle. Yeah. So you can shuffle. And it's a really comfortable riding position, even at my height. Like I'm sitting on this comfortable seat and I'm sitting straight up like yeah. I'm sitting in the living room and I'm not reaching for those handlebars at all. Yeah. So moving your feet a bit on the pads, I think probably it would compensate a bit for the fact that you couldn't have highway pegs on it. Who would like this bike? 
who would you recommend? Well, to? first of all, I have to be an experienced rider, mm -hmm. uh, someone who's um, comfortable on gold wings and <clears throat> other large bikes for long. And you could take this on a long ride, no question about it, because you've got the luggage space, you've got the comfortable seat, so you could dump on this and travel for hours if you wanted to. So someone who wants to ride long distance, uh, and again, I think I emphasize the fact that you, you have to have a bit of riding experience because otherwise you're probably going to dump it. Yeah. You're turning around, if you make too short a turn, it would go over, uh, go over fairly easily. Yeah. So um, what do you think? Can we finally wrestle the Valkyrie away from you? No. <laughs> I'm a very sentimental guy. I thought for <laughs> sure this would get you off that uh, Valkyrie. No. Great job, Dave. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the thanks. opportunity. You bet.